cop and a Secret Service agent. He's here to give us his top three news stories of the past seven days. The great Dan Bongino joins us tonight. Hey, Dan. Well, you're lucky because I have four. And the fourth story four. of the week, yes, is going to be a nice segue from your UFO segment. Story number four, Tucker. Apparently, some United States senators have received an actual briefing on this UFO phenomenon. And now, like you, I always wonder why this isn't a bigger story. Listen, Tucker, we don't have yeah. to go all H.G. Wells, War of the Worlds or anything. There's no need for drama. But if you had some stuff flying over your country with a technology no one could explain, maybe it's kind of a bigger deal, right? Maybe we should be a little more yes. concerned. I'm just throwing that out there for the audience, you know? That's my I think that's a, that is a story. fair concern, I would say. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. We think alike, right? Is something really out there? Three more U.S. senators received a classified briefing about UFOs at the Pentagon, or in current lingo, unidentified aerial phenomena. You may have heard the pilots and other military personnel have been reporting these, these kinds of sightings for years. A couple weeks ago, the Department of Defense even released footage shot by a Navy Super Hornet pilot. But you may not have known that back in 2007, Congress directed the Pentagon to set up a $22 million search for the truth. And Tom Foreman is with me more on the uh, Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program. Um, so Tom, talk to me about the, the senators getting classified briefings on uh, UFOs. Yeah, well, here's the interesting thing. It's easy to laugh at this, easy to think it's silly or it's just a bunch of, uh, of uh, hokum out there. but. Senator Mark Warner, who is the vice chair of the Intelligence Committee, said, look, I think it's important. He told us just this afternoon, I think it's important that the military is taking this more seriously now than they did in the past. So what are they taking seriously? Those videos you were talking about relate to a couple of different sightings we're talking about. In 2004, there was one called the Tic Tac sighting. They called it that because they said it looked like a Tic Tac flying out there very close to the water on the West Coast. And then more recently, there were some out on the East Coast that people were talking about, 2014, 2015, where these pilots were describing seeing these things up to 30,000 feet in the air, flying at extraordinary speeds, hypersonic, well over the speed of sound, changing direction in the most uh, astonishing ways, and seemingly defying the laws of physics. Listen to what one of these pilots had to say. No distinct wings, no distinct tail, no distinct exhaust. It seemed like they were aware of our presence because they would actively move around us. So that's what has everyone excited here. These reports, the release of these videos, and you mentioned the program. That was originally started by Senator Harry Reid because they said, look, we just need to know what's going on. It only lasted about five years. It's been shut down for a number of years. And they said they really didn't find anything. But Brooke, you know, the obvious question here is, is there something out there? Not necessarily extraterrestrial, but is there something else? Some sure. kind of a drone, some sure. kind of secret uh, technology, something that maybe we control, maybe we don't. Well, I think my great, our great pilots would know. Uh, and some of them really see things that are a little bit different than in the past. So we're gonna see, but we'll watch it. You'll be the first to know. So the top levels of government, they're talking about it, Brooke. No answers yet, but a lot of questions. Okay, so it took 70 years for the government to admit the existence of UFO. Now, what about alien abduction? Stan says he began seeing UFOs all the time. He could barely look up without seeing some strange light or orb in the sky. Over the years, his wristwatch stopped working. Lights would flicker at his mere presence, and birds would crash into his car. If you're a true experiencer, a true abductee, you have what's called high strangeness. All these weird, bizarre, paranormal things start to happen, almost like your house is either being haunted or nobody really knows. There are many unsung heroes and soldiers who are in the front line fighting these alien genes. Here is one of them. I've been asked to cover today how to protect ourselves from the jinn. Created from a smokeless fire. Okay, question to everybody. Does that mean that now the jinn are fire? If I am involved in a jinn, if a jinn possesses me, do I get burnt? No. They were created from a smokeless fire like Bani Adam was created from clay. 
So like Ben Bani Adam was created from clay and when I touch my hand I don't get any clay on it. Likewise the jinn were created from a smokeless fire and that fire remains a part of their nature but we know from the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that they right now are not actual fire or something like that. They live amongst us, they have families, there are Muslim jinn, Buddhist jinn, Hindu jinn, there are good jinn, bad jinn, not every shaitan or not every jinn is a shaitan and not every shaitan is a jinn because we have shayateen from the humans and we have shayateen from the jinn and we have believers from the jinn and we have disbelievers from the jinn. Good. Most of them live, they tend to live, inhabit in faraway places, places like deserted places or places where it's not particularly clean. Whereabouts in your house, whereabouts would you be careful of in your house? Toilets, bathrooms, good, excellent, inshallah. Sections 4153 of the Tycho Treaty. So hand over whatever galaxy you might be carrying and step away from your busted ass vehicle and put your hands on your head. Stories of UFO sightings and alien abductions date back centuries. And unless President Trump declassifies the Area 51 files, rumors of aliens and the men in black who protect us will always remain. But my next guest says the rumors are true because he says he was abducted by aliens 45 years ago. Calvin Parker joins me now. All right, so Calvin, just so I understand this and we'll make it easy for the audience to understand, you were, claim you were abducted when you were with a friend 45 years ago. Um, and now that your friend has unfortunately passed away, you feel comfortable sharing it because he didn't want to really go too public with it. But let's start from the beginning. You were walking where and what happened? We were fishing. We actually got off work in Pascagoula, Mississippi, and was fishing at the old Shaw Peter shipyard. And that's where something come in from behind us. And I'm not for sure if it was aliens or what it was, but I'm just assuming it was. And they landed behind us, and three of them got out and took. A, uh, two of them got a hold of Charlie, and one got a hold of myself. Okay, and one took second. Us aboard. Okay, okay. So when when they were coming down, what were they in? Were they in some sort of spacecraft? Well, no, I was facing the river and we just seen some lights behind us. So when we turned around, the light got so bright and they was already there. We didn't even hear them land. They okay. was probably the, the length of a football field behind us. The true soldiers who are fighting these invading aliens don't use guns and weapons. They use a very unorthodox means of fighting these aliens, and they are highly successful. We know that the jinn are of different types. We know there are three types defined in the Sunnah. One that flies through the air, and one that takes the form of snakes and dogs, and one that, uh, and one that resides in a particular place, much like the humans reside in a particular place. Uh, we know that they are from the unseen. We know that they see us from where we do not see them. I think they were communicating with you telepathically. I can't explain it any other way. I, I know what I experienced. Suddenly, Stan says his mind was filled telepathically with unexplained images. Awesome, bam, 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 images, thoughts, images, images. And what we know that they can touch people and we know that they can possess people. Excellent, good. We know that the jinn, we should be careful that everybody understands, and I'm sure the brothers have explained this already, that not every jinni is evil. And we should get away from the, this idea that all of the jinn are inherently evil and inherently bad. They do have certain characteristics though. What have we learned about the characteristics of the jinn? Their nature. Are they reasonable and very, you know, deliberative and very slow and, you know, or are they kind of fiery and very quick to, to do things? They have a very fiery character, excellent. Okay, they have abilities that we don't have. 
But we need to be careful to understand these are not what we would call supernatural abilities. These are just different to our abilities. Okay, the jinn can fly, but there are things that we can do that the jinn cannot do. And there are things that the jinn can do that we cannot do. What I'm getting, uh, what I'm getting at by this is that we should not attribute acts or characteristics of divinity things that belong only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the jinn just because they can do some things that we can't do the jinn can fly through the sky okay planes can fly through the sky but you don't see people worshiping planes okay so it's very important that while we realize the jinn yes the jinn can fly some of the jinn at least can fly through the sky and they can do things quicker than us and some of them have strength and some of them they're very very different but that doesn't mean that they should have any share in the divinity that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where people have gone very badly wrong in the past. Because the jinn were able to do things that they were not from the normal things that human beings could do, people attributed divinity to them. People attributed to them the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and people eventually uh, performed acts of worship towards them. So it's very, very, very important that when we talk about the jinn, we understand that they are simply different. And that's where I come onto the topic of fear of the jinn. And I just, you know, again, glimpse or you know, kind of skim over these topics, but fear of the jinn. Allah says, Don't fear them, but fear me if you are really believers. So, Alhamdulillah, you can learn to be proficient in dealing with the jinn. And inshallah, you won't have any problems. So it's very, very important that you understand they are not to be feared. The greatest weapon and the greatest evil that the jinn have against us is our making us fear them like we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Du'as that protect us from the jinn, from the shaitan, from uh, the evil eye, du'a that protect us uh, from, um, uh, from magic and so on and so forth, such as a'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tammati min sharri ma khalaq and other du'a. If you are a past, present or potential future abductee, Please pay attention. The prerequisite to use this weapon is a true belief in one God and rely on Him and then ask help. Here is how Muslims ask help from one true God to fight these jinn aliens. Remember, alien jinns and human are all creation of the same God. قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والنار